This trigonometric equation is more complicated than the ones that we have seen before. This is because both sine alpha and cosine alpha appear in the same equation. This will be the first thing that we are going to address. We are going to be able to get rid of one in terms of the other via the Pythagorean identity. We can easily write cosine squared alpha in terms of sine alpha. So let's do that. This is what we refer to as quadratic in sine alpha. What that means is that if we introduce a new variable, say m, then this equation, once we rewrite it in terms of m, will become simply just a quadratic equation. We know how to solve those. We'll do that. Reduce one side to zero, and then factor, and apply the zero product rule. Dangerous spot in the problem, we're not done. We were never asked to solve an equation in m, but we were asked to solve an equation in alpha. So we're going to have to remember this, that m is just short for sine alpha. And once we have solved for m, now we're going to have to go back and solve for alpha. This is a typical situation. Whenever we solve a quadratic equation, we could get either two or one or no solution. In this case, we got two solutions. Each of them will give rise to a basic trigonometric equation. Sine is the second coordinate, so we're looking for points in the unit circle whose y coordinate is half. So it looks like two angles do that, 30 degrees and 150 degrees. And sine alpha equals negative 1 happens when alpha is negative 90. The solution set would be alpha is either 30 degrees or 150 degrees or negative 90 degrees or any coterminal. 